Hi class, it's Bill Berry here and welcome to our series on views. The first video we talked about some view basics, uh, how to create them, what they are, things like that. And now we're going to jump into talking about some of the intricacies, some of the details that we didn't have time to cover in that one. So let us jump down and get into that. Views can be treated as tables to a great extent. We know already that you can select from them, you can add WHERE clauses, and that the end user may be kind of unaware of the fact that uh, that you have, uh, you know, that it's, a, that it's a view and not a table. One other thing is that they can attempt, you can sometimes use a view to update your data. So you can use it for an insert or for an update or for a delete command, right? You might be able to do it. But there are some pretty significant restrictions on that. So you can only use a view to update a database if the following things are true. You can't have distinct. Right? If you have distinct, that does some sort of filtering. You'll see there's a common theme here. Anytime you have this idea of taking more data and sort of funneling it into a smaller space, taking big stuff and summarizing it or doing any kind of compression, right? Any kind of compression will make the thing unupdatable, non-updatable, right? So that's the sort of idea here. You can't use any aggregate functions, right? If you're doing any summing or counting or mins and maxes, again, that sort of has a compressing effect. Same thing with group by or having if you've studied uh, summary queries, right? You can't do that stuff because it compresses data. Union, right? There's no way for it to take a union and push that backwards, right, through the through the funnel. So all of that stuff is sort of very similar in that it has a compressing or sort of a an effect that it can't reverse, right? It can't undo. So you also can't try to update calculated columns if you happen to have those. Uh, also, here are two biggies. You can't update more than one base table at a time. So if you have an up, uh, a view that takes multiple tables and does a join on them, and that join tries or has multiple columns that you try to update that come from multiple tables, then that won't work, right? You'll get an error and it won't succeed. Also, of course, you can't violate any table constraints. Views don't really have constraints per se, but if you're trying to update or push data into a table, you still have to follow the table constraints, right? You does, it doesn't do an end run around that. So pretty much uh, all of these things are fairly restrictive, right? So most views are considered sort of read-only. But notice that's not syntactic. You don't put some word in there to say whether it's updatable or not. That's not the case. In this case, it's just a matter of whether you're using any of these things. And then the view, you know, itself is either updatable or not, depending on your use of these, uh, of these things. So that's some of the uh, examples here of where you can update uh, for a view. So let's do a little more specific example. Can I do the following using my pet adoption? Is it legal for us to do this insert statement, right? Let's think about it. Um, which rows, which rules are we violating? Will it work or not? So let's see what we're doing. Well, this view, remember, has the pet name from here and the customer name from here and the adoption date from here. So think about it a minute, pause the video if you'd like, and think about, is this view going to be updatable? So let's look and see if we have followed or broken any of these rules. Okay, it doesn't have a distinct, so that's fine, that should be good. It doesn't use any aggregates. Yes, there's no sum, count, min, max, etc. Fine, we didn't do that. There's no group by or having in our select. Go back and look at it. There's no union. Great, everything's Fans, fantastic. You don't, okay, we don't have any calculated columns here, so that's good. So everything so far is good. Are we trying to update more than one base table at a time? Ah, that's a problem, because I'm trying to push in data to here, here, and here with this insert command. So this is a big no, right? We are violating that rule, which means this insert statement is not going to succeed. Also, does it violate any table constraints? Uh, well, we're trying to insert data without a primary key column. Um, maybe that'll work if this is an auto increment, uh, and the, but this is not null, so we are violating a not null constraint. So I think we have to mark this one as a big fail as well. 
right? So because of these two failures, this is not going to work and you're going to get, uh, you're just going to get an error. It's just not going to succeed, right? So that's an example of how a, how a query is not updatable because of its content, or sorry, a view is not updatable because of its content. So just be aware of that. Many views are not going to be updatable because of their nature. Again, it's not syntactic, it's just because of the nature. So let's, um, that, that sort of brings us to <clears throat> the last point that we want to talk about in views, and that is this with check option. So what is this thing and how might with check option is giving us a, a window into an interesting scenario that can sometimes happen to users. Consider the option that you have a where clause in your view. For instance, you're working with customers and you have a where clause that says in your view where customer balance is not zero. Right? So that's great. So you have this view and you've looked at some customers, you're looking at that specific customer list using the view, and then you receive notice that a customer's made a payment. So you go and try to do an update saying, oh, I need to update the customer's balance, right? So you try to do an update and you try to make that customer pay in full. But wait a minute, your, your view had this clause that said where customer balance is not zero and now you're changing the customer balance with an update statement using that view. Well, what's going to happen? Well, after they, you run this update statement, what's going to happen when you refresh the view, when you do another select all? Well, what's going to happen is that customer is no longer going to be in the view. All right, that customer has fallen out of the view because the update changed the condition that the where was using, namely this part, right? And so now they have fallen out of the view. That can freak people out, right? It's not anything incorrect. Of course, they don't match anymore, right? So they shouldn't be in the view. But sometimes that causes people to panic because they don't really understand the full deal about what's going on here. They panic and think that they did something that deleted that customer, right? So they get worried about it. So for that particular scenario, we do have this option called with check option. You just put it at the end of your query, right? After your select statement. You just do that and then any time you try to do an insert or update command that would affect the participation in the view, right? Any time that an insert or update would make the, the particular row that you're working on not appear in the view, if you say with check option, it will refuse it. SQL will not do that work for you, right? It'll actually say check option failed. Now, we can talk about separately the fact that the user is going to be confused too, right, when they see that, right, that's not exactly an error they're going to understand, but that's what this with check option is made for, is to keep things from falling out of the view when you try to use that view to do an insert or update. Now, of course, you can go to the base tables, right, you can always go to the tables and do an update there, and then when you rerun the view, oh well, right, that's, that's part of the nature of the game. So it's a little bit of an odd option, but it does work, right, you can actually use it. So let's look now at the last piece, which is altering and destroying views. There is syntax here that lets you alter a view, right? Not here in the slide deck, but you can certainly find it. So if you want to alter a view, look up the syntax for it. But frankly, you're probably keeping this stuff around, right? You're keeping around the create or replace view, and you can always just go rerun it, right? So it's often easier to do that than doing alter. And I'll show you a trick in SQL in a minute so that that might help. Uh, but that's what I would recommend. And then dropping, of course, just as easy as you'd expect. Drop view and then get put its name, right? So that's typical syntax for any kind of database object. So let's jump over to SQL, MySQL Workbench, and let me show you a quick trick. So we're here in MySQL Workbench, and I want to show you a little trick with the Schema Navigator. If you right-click this thing and you say, Send to SQL Editor or Copy to Clipboard, a create statement, right, a create statement, what you're going to see is it's going to be a little bit long and a little bit hard to read, all right, but if you'll notice, if I take out some fluff, all right, create view pets and owners as select, all right, then I can actually see 
that it's just doing column renames, right? So if I bring all this stuff down a little bit, you can actually see that this recreates your there's our from statement, right? This literally recreates your view. So you don't even have to keep around the SQL for it. You can always get it back by using this trick and having it recreate the create statement for you and then you can go edit it. Now, of course, these are a little annoying because it puts back ticks around everything and it's a little bit uh, a little bit crazy. It takes the usings and make ons, whatever, right? It's a little complex, but you can get the stuff back is the point. So you can always go back and grab it there if you'd like. All right, so that brings us to the end of our topic on views. I'll make a separate video for the function overview because that's really quite a different topic. And so thanks for watching this video. Hope it's useful and uh, good luck using views. I think you'll find that they are very useful and very easy to use. So see you in another video, hopefully.